Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows and try to release a new review every day from Monday to Friday. Today I'm going over the new pilot episode for The Last of Us. Just a quick warning for this video, I do give a soft layout of the episode but try to keep details vague to avoid spoilers. The overall story is based on a dystopic world overtaken by a zombie-like infection. Joel Miller and Ellie Williams are an unlikely duo that are brought together by circumstance and endure a harrowing journey across the infected wastelands of America. The first episode, When You're Lost in the Darkness, is written and directed by Craig Mazin and is based on the video game series by Neil Druckmann. The episode is an hour and 20 minutes long and features two distinct time periods, during the infection event and 20 years afterward. The story starts off with Joel and Sarah Miller in the days before the infection spreads. Joel is a single father struggling to take care of his daughter and make ends meet. Sarah witnesses one of the first infections and then Joel, Sarah, and Joel's brother Tommy try to escape their town the show then does a time skip and finishes up 20 years in the future with Joel trying to find his brother Tommy. The show does a lot right, makes a few mistakes, and does an incredible job of setting up the series. It opens with a scientific talk on a television show where John Hanna and Christopher Heyerdahl as two doctors set up the idea of a global pandemic and how a fungal infection could turn humans into living puppets. This is a great little scare tactic and gives us a brief explanation of how the events might have gotten started. From there, we see the first events unfold through the eyes of Sarah Miller. Through following her around, we get a terrifying first glance at the infected of the series. Then we see her father and uncle become brutal and violent people, and watch how quickly the world becomes an insane place. Airplanes falling out of the sky, explosions, people panicking en masse, and the infection spreading rapidly. The show does a great job of hiding the infection in the background at first. Subtle little moments like the weird movements the grandma next door does in the background, or news stories on the radio. It reminded me a lot of the opening to The Walking Dead where they're giving you all these little hints before making the big reveal halfway through the episode. When the infection takes hold, the camera follows Joel and his family's attempt to escape. The entire time, the viewer is kept right behind Joel and his family like another silent member. It feels like a chase cutscene from a video game in some ways, but works wonderfully to immerse the audience in the atmosphere and events. Most of the screen time for the first half of the episode goes to Nico Parker with Pedro Pascal and Gabrielle Luna sharing the rest. They play the Miller family, Joel, Sarah, and Tommy. Nico Parker plays an innocent kid and a thoughtful daughter. She does what her dad says and she goes out of her way to get him a gift for his birthday. When the infection starts, we see the terror in her eyes as she watches the people around her go insane. Pedro Pascal starts off as a tired, overworked dad. He struggles to make time for his daughter, even on his birthday, and yet when the infection starts, his first thoughts are of family. He gets a lot of big emotional moments in this episode and Pascal just nails them. After the time skip, we follow Tess and Joel on their business throughout the safe zone city. The show sets up events for a modern day story using the events prior to the skip as background for the characters. It then sets up a few new characters before kicking off the main story which sees Joel and Ellie brought together for the first time. There's a nice callback to events from the beginning of the story and a lot of world building. Sets after the time skip look fantastic. They're run down, filled with people who look devastated, and there are messages of despair and religious slogans graffitied everywhere even the title of the episode, When You're Lost in the Darkness. It feels like a cage city ruled by fear, where people have to cling to whatever hopes they can. At times the show can look visually stunning, like in this scene where the light catches the actors and reflects off of different surfaces in the room to create this warm atmosphere. These moments look wonderful, and the show often puts forth shots like this, but unfortunately it kind of ruins them with the concept it stuck to for this episode. The entire pilot is filmed with a hand camera that's zoomed in too close and constantly shakes. The shake is irritating and nauseating to some, and ruins the beauty of the scenery quite a bit. It's a weird design choice, and while the shaky movement and close-up nature of the camera do have moments where they work, they more often than not fall flat and end up obscuring the visuals. Sound-wise, the episode is well produced, but only has a single memorable moment that really stands out. Most of the show is silent, with good sound effects layered in to replicate a real-world environment. They only use music to draw out the right emotions during a conversation or to help raise tension during a big moment. There are a lot of great sound engineering choices made during the infection event, like the sirens that are far off in the distance when Sarah first wakes up, or the sound of the infected as they munch on people, or the intense screams that people start making as fear and panic sets in. Listening to all of that in the background gives a dreadful perspective on how terrifying the situation must be for Joel and his family. The songs they use are quiet, instrumental tracks that appear for short bursts and never take the focus of the scene. They never conflict with the dialogue and although they match well with the moment, they're not very memorable. Only Depeche Mode's Never Let Me Down makes a big impact and it doesn't play until the final 30 seconds of the episode. It has a ton of great meaning behind it that's hidden in the show's dialogue and I thought it was a great song to cap off the episode with. 
Overall, I really enjoyed the pilot for The Last of Us, and can't wait to see what comes next. The series looks like a return to zombies and dystopian worlds, and I'm ready for lots of drama and lots of horrifying scenes of zombies tearing people apart and the survivors struggling to stay alive. The cast is high quality, and as long as they find a tripod, the visuals will look fantastic. Give this a go if you like dark dramas with good character development. 8 out of 10.